Hello, everybody. It's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly episode. This is episode number 172 for June the 21st, 2022. Happy first day of summer if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's supposed to be a hot one today here where I live, so we'll see how that turns out. Looking out my window, yep, it looks pretty sunny already, and it is 18 degrees C, and it's only 7.30 in the morning. So, yeah, I think it is going to be a hot day. Okay, let's get right into what I've been making. Well, I am very pleased with this, how it turned out. This is an in-the-hoop applique design. I've talked about those before, even done a couple of videos about how I do them. This one, however, was a very complicated design, as you can tell by the detail that's in it. It's called Feather Jungle, and it's by Sweet Pea Designs. And you do it in five pieces, and then you sew the pieces together. You put a backing on it, do a little stitch in the ditch to secure the edges. And yeah, and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Now, you're going to look at this and go, well, that must have taken you a long time. Yes, it did. Pretty much all I worked on all last week. Um, each one of those pieces comes up on my embroidery machine. The embroidery machine gives me the time for, for beginning to end of a piece. And it said for each one of these about 90 to 103 minutes. So an hour and a half approximately. Yeah, you need to double that and almost triple it. Because that doesn't take into consideration the, uh, the fact that you have to do color changes. And there are a lot of different colors in this. Not only that, but you have to lay down fabric. And then you have to trim the fabric. And then you have to satin stitch around the fabric. So yeah, this is very, very involved. But the end result, I'm very thrilled with. Um, it's on my kitchen table right now, and it looks spectacular there. Now, would I actually put dishes on this, you know, because it is a table runner kind of a thing? No, I definitely would not. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, can you wash it? Yes. You can wash it. Do I want to wash it? No, I do not. The colors are color fast in the threads and they are meant to be used and to be washed. However, I just wouldn't want to take a chance of getting some kind of stain on this that I couldn't get out. Not after the amount of time it took for me to put this in. So this is purely a decorative piece. It is not a what I would call a practical piece or we call it a utility piece. Um, but yeah, I, it does look good. Um, would I make another one? Well, you know, if somebody wanted one of these or something like that, I mean, or I was going to give it as a gift. Yeah, I probably would just keeping in mind, knowing how much time it would take. Um, it'd be interesting to know if you were to sell something like this, which you could possibly sell it for. I mean, with the amount of time that went into it, um, materials, Really, it doesn't use that many that much fabric. Uh, you could do it with a lot of scrap fabric. Um, thread, well, it looks like a lot of thread, but you got a lot of thread on your spools. And I mean, it hardly dented my supply of thread. But it's the time element, which I think is the most weighing factor if you were to price something like this. So I don't know, maybe in the comments below, maybe you can make a suggestion as to if I was to sell it, I am not going to sell it. Okay. I mean, I'll tell you that right now, but if I was to sell it, what do you think is a reasonable price to put on it? I'm going to say a couple of hundred bucks, you know, and I don't even think that would really cover my, my labor and my time, but you know, what would people pay for it? What do you think? I'd be interested to hear your ideas about this. So, you know, you've got some ideas about it, put them in the show notes below. And maybe next week I'll revisit this and talk about what you've come up with as far as price is concerned. Okay. So that's the only thing I got around to really this week. I spent most of my time on this and I'm sort of itching to get back at uh, doing some more quilting. So actually yesterday I started a new project. And if you remember, I think it was last week, I showed you the pattern. Uh, with a kit for a uh, table runner, uh, Desert Star, I think it was called. Um, I pulled it out of the package yesterday to see what it's all about. Well, 
I'm a little disappointed in the quilt store that put it together. I could see the fabrics that were in it and they were all solids and the pattern itself did lend its did look like yeah sure you could use solids in it but when i got it out and i started reading the pattern the pattern designer intended for you to use prints with it and also intended for you well they had two variations of the pattern one you could use primarily um a charm pack and some fat quarters and the other one was more yardage um so that's nice to see the versatility of that pattern but she wanted the designer wanted prints in it and rightly so i think it would look better in prints it would look fine in solids but it would look okay uh, as prints as well um and then i got thinking hmm let's go through my christmas fabrics i'm pretty sure i've got a charm pack of christmas fabrics and i still have a lot of christmas fabric left over from last year so i dug those out and i I'm going to make this a Christmas table runner. I got the hiccup, sorry. Uh, possibly a, uh, put it in my pile of possible gifts for people. You know, start now, then I'll have my stash of gifts ready. Um, if it turns out, it's a pretty easy pattern. Um, a lot of half square triangles in it, which are easy enough to do. If it turns out, uh, and given the time, I might make several of these in various fabrics but back to the point i wanted to make about kits okay you have to be careful when you buy a kit because i have come to the conclusion that what quilt stores do that make up their own quits quilts kits that's the word i want kits they uh pull out a pattern and they look at what they've got laying around and basically what they put in the kit is fabric that they've got like the tail end of on a on a bolt or it's just stuff that isn't selling. And so they pair it up and put it in a kit. And, you know, the way they lay it out in the kit, it can look very nice. Now, I'm not saying that they're cheaping out on this or whatever. It probably makes really good business sense um, rather than having fabric that's never going to move. Put it in a kit you know, basically repackage the whole thing and maybe it'll sell. Worked on me. But I've noticed that in several kits that I've picked up. So on this one in particular, I saw the design. I could see in the package what the fabrics were and I still bought it. Well, I, I didn't mind the fabrics. I thought they looked okay um, with it. But if I'd really thought about it, I could have probably saved some money and just bought the pattern, period. Because as I said, this pattern only takes basically fat quarters or charm packs. So everybody's got a bunch of that stuff laying around. So, you know, why pay for fabric that you might not use? Well, whatever. So I'll show that to you. Probably have it done for next week. No promises. Um, but yeah. Okay. So um, I did deliver. We delivered the quilt that I made for my friend who's in the hospital. And uh, his partner uh, sent us a video of showing the quilt to him. Um, he didn't look so well. The partner, I think, was giving a, a little bit more of a, a rosier picture of the situation than it really is. It's a serious situation uh, for this individual. I mean, he is on a ventilator, although they get him up and in a wheelchair. And he is responsive. Um, a little slow on the responses, though. And yeah, he had brain bleed. So yeah, rightly so to expect that. Um, but it was nice that they took a, a little video to show us, um, you know, showing our friend the quilt and everything like that. And he looked like he was genu genuinely happy to receive it. And that's great. That's what I intended it for. So if it brought in a little happiness into his life right now in a very trying, to say the least, situation, then that makes me really happy and it was worth the effort. Okay, so that brings me to planning for Christmas. I've already alluded to that, talking about that table runner I'm making. Well, I have been doing some other things here. Let me, if I can get it up here on the screen. 
Okay, so this isn't quilting or sewing yet. It will be. Um, but this is basically my 3D printer. I'm playing around with different things for Christmas designs. Uh, I really love the Nutcrackers. I think those are really cute and they're, they're printing really, really well. Uh, and sometimes, you know, when you print things like this that are kind of on the skinny side, you don't always get a good print, but these ones are printing very nicely. In fact, I'm doing them in rainbow colors. I'm going to make a couple of more uh, with this to fill in the gap, a blue one, and there's another color I'm going to use in there. Oh, red. I don't have a red. I have a yellow, I have an orange, I have a purple, I have a green, but I don't have a blue or a red. So those I'll be making. Um, that little thing down in the front, that is what they call um, an articulated print-in-place piece. It's a little chain set, and it's got the letters Merry Christmas, or no, Christmas Express across the top of it. It actually turned out pretty good. These kind of things are very, very difficult to print, depending on your printer settings. Um, the only problem was it had a little bit of supports in, inside some of the letters. And when I knocked those supports out, I kind of broke the letters. So have glue gun. We'll stick things together. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be making another one of those. It's, it's just too fragile. And you see my little Christmas trees over there. Um, you know, they're kind of fun, very stylized. And then the little container. Okay, I think I if you saw my vlogs over the last couple of weeks, I was playing around with this. Uh, one 3D print that makes this little screw cap uh, jar. So I added the gnome on the front of it, and I thought to Christmas it up, I'd make one of those trees, one of the bigger trees, shrink it down and stick it on top. Yeah, okay. It's a bit of a weapon now, isn't it? Poke out somebody's eye with that one. Um, but I'm just playing around. I'm trying to find things that I could give away, little things at Christmas time. And I'm thinking, minus the little Christmas tree on top, on these jars, making maybe some of these and filling them with um, some Christmas candies or something like that. Um, or I don't know, pins or something, if I give it to somebody who's a sewer or a quilter or something like that. It's just an idea. I've got six months to Christmas, but you know, I'm starting early because as you well know, what happens to us all at Christmas time, well, we get into the week before uh, the month before Christmas, we go into panic mode because we had all these ideas of things we we're going to make for Christmas for home decor, home decor, rent it lips this morning, I can tell you, um, or gifts and things like that. And suddenly we're scrambling. And I'm not one of those kind of people. I'm a planner and I like to work ahead. So, yeah, the next projects I'm going to be working on now for the next during the summer <laughs> will probably be. Christmas projects. I'll work on other things too, but more in line with Christmas. No wonder I hate Christmas by the time I get to it. I spend six months of the year getting ready for it. Okay, so speaking of getting ready though, I started to go through some of my patterns to look at things that um, I might want to get, uh, like in terms of fabric, because tis the season. Christmas fabrics are already starting to come in onto at least the online stores and actual quilting stores will probably be having getting out their Christmas fabrics as well. And you know what happens if you see a fabric you like and you go, well, I'll maybe pick that up next week or, you know, right now it's only June. You know, why would I get Christmas fabric now? Next time you go in to get it, it's gone. So just a word to the wise. If you see a Christmas fabric out in your local quilt store or online and you really like it, don't hesitate, buy it because somebody else will. So I was going through my patterns and things to see if I what I had potentially for Christmas projects. And um, here are a couple I pulled out. Now, the one Very Merry Wall Quilt, this is... I think I got this as a free pattern I downloaded. It's a fairly simplistic pattern, but I really liked the the layout of those sort of stars or whatever they are. Um, it's not really a star. It's more kind of like ribbons. I don't like the colors in it. I do not like pink at the best of times. And I really don't like pink as for a Christmas color or design, but that's okay. I don't have to make it in those colors. 
Um, as I said, I think it may have been a free download and I don't know where I got it, but the name of the designer is Amanda Niederhauser of Jedi Craft Girl. So I think if you did a search for Jedi Craft Girl, you probably could find this design. Now, the one beside it called Pull Twist Table Runner, I have actually made this before. I made this a couple of years ago. It's a fun design, and with the right fabrics, it can look really great. Um, it, it looks like there's pieces twisted around a pole. Uh, but it's really an illusion. It's just the way you lay out the pieces. And it is a very easy pattern to make. And I'm sure you can pick this one up for free. I think this pattern was given to me at a retreat I had gone to. Um, so just do a search for full twist table runner and I'm sure you'll find lots of it, lots of them. These two, one is written by Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. It's one of their free downloadable designs. Uh, most of the patterns that Donna Jordan makes herself, she puts up as a free download. So if you've never checked out Jordan Fabrics, do. Look for their free patterns. They have literally hundreds of them. Um, and I'm sure you'll find something that you'll like. And the best part, too, of most of Donna Jordan's fabrics or J Dor Donna Jordan's I'm having a real trouble with my mouth today. You'll find tutorials on YouTube for many of Donna Jordan's uh, designs. So this one, although not a Christmas quilt, I thought it would look really great in Christmas fabrics. So I've had this for quite some time. So I pulled it out and I now have a little separate section where I keep my patterns that I want to get to soon uh, on my cutting table they have their own little rack now marked christmas projects we'll see <laughs> i'm being overly ambitious and then beside it this is another free pattern if you go to allpeoplequilt.com you can find this one it's called icy blues and it's basically trees now this is a fairly versatile pattern i think because if you do it in christmas fabric it's going to look like christmas trees but if you do it in other colors uh it could look well it could be seasonal depending on the fabrics you pick i think it could be fall like spring like summer like winter like all up to you know the, whatever the fabrics you pick so and it looks to me like this is a pretty easy pattern because it's just a series of flying geese um so easy enough to do with the addition of some uh trunks on a couple of the pieces so i think that one will make a fairly quick project and this one they're showing here is a table runner but you know you could expand that design to a whole quilt i think it would look really good as a whole quilt and then these two projects i'll talk about this one first the norwegian snowflakes uh this was another freebie pattern that i downloaded um and if you go to quiltedtwins.com i think you can find it and just do a search for norwegian snowflakes when you get there um a lot of little pieces in this because they talk about medium to dark blues for the two inch squares and there's two inch white squares so yeah there is a lot of little pieces in this one so now this is where my accu quilt uh cutter will come in handy for cutting these little squares i think i have a two inch square uh block die if i don't i'll get one uh <laughs> if i make this quilt but again this is one that i think would look really great in christmas fabrics um not only that it, it, it's another one like depending on the fabrics you you pick it doesn't have to be christmas it could be just sort of a winter style quilt actually i think that's what they're showing you right here using uh sort of the blues and the whites colors now over next to that this is another in the hoop uh applique project it's uh a wall hanging it's got a lot of tiles in it, as you can see, and then you sew them all together. This will take a long time to do. I haven't really studied the pattern that closely. It's one that I got when I first got my first embroidery machine. 
and I've never gotten around to it. Um, I think it could be a really spectacular looking wall hanging. Uh, but this is one that has to be started now. Because each one of those little tiles in there, I'll bet you, take a couple of hours a piece. And just looking at it, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's 24 tiles just in the middle panel alone. And then there's all the little tiles that go on the border outside. So, yeah, this is a long project. Well, we'll see if we get to it or not to any of these. So those are just some things, and I'm sure I'll see other things that'll pique my interest. Um before then but one thing if is if you do some of the smaller things like table toppers mug rugs um table runners if you need quickie gifts if you start now you know if you've got a few hours each day to do a little bit of sewing you could probably knock off a whole bunch of these within a month uh without any problem that's my theory we'll see how that works out okay so the other thing that I did do last week is I made another short tutorial and I want to talk about making binding, how I make my binding. Now, there are tons of videos about making binding, okay? And I have not reinvented the wheel. But my spin on this tutorial is not so much about the making the binding, but what I use to make the binding because I have some gadgets that I use when I make binding that make my life a little easier and makes making binding a little less tedious and a little faster. So I have done a tutorial about this and it is now posted on my uh, YouTube channel. But I thought I'd give you a little teaser to show you what this is all about. And we have to do that for the entire length of our piece of binding. But I have found a tool that makes this a little bit easier. And it's this little blue 3D printed device. This comes from a company called, and I'll try to remember to put it in the show notes below. It's called the Third Hand Binding Folder Clip. And essentially, it just clamps to the end of your table. You pull the binding through and it folds it for you. Um, it's called Purple hobbies.com is the name of the website where I bought it. It was very inexpensive. And as I said, I think this company just 3D prints these parts. Now I've had, I'll loosen off the clamp all the way. And I just put it on here and I just tighten up this little wing nut and there. Now, so the link for that is in the show notes below. So that takes me to Subscribers Quilt of the Week. This comes from someone who lives very, very far away in Oslo. I believe she's in Oslo. She maybe lives just outside of Oslo, Norway. And this is Rebecca Scarberg. And uh, she's a regular subscriber here and also has joined us a few times for Craft and Chat. So you may know Rebecca if you've been on a Craft and Chat when she has been there. But she sent us some pictures of her wonderful creation. So I'm going to share those with you now. This week's subscribers quilts come from Rebecca Skarberg, who is in Norway. And she writes, I have sent you pictures of two of my quilts. The first pattern is Delilah by Jen Kingwell. Some of it is hand pieced and some machine pieced. I used fabrics from Jen Kingwell, Tula Pink and Allison Glass. It is quilted in an edge to edge fan pattern. I had the pleasure of meeting Jen at a quilt festival here in Oslo. She inspected and approved my quilt, and I was quite star-struck. The second quilt is Early Riser by Sue Kind, sorry, by So Kind of Wonderful. This quilt I machine pieced using my quick curve ruler. The fabric are fabrics are basic gray grunge and Allison glass tulips on Essex linen, which is the background. The quilt is custom quilted on a long arm. If you find curves challenging, I really recommend looking into the so kind of wonderful rulers and videos on how to do it. The curve is just soft enough to be able to sew without any pinning. Easy peasy. Both quilts are quilted on a long arm by a friend of mine, and I'm not sure how to say her name, Maretta. 
maybe <laughs> in Oslo. I have done everything else. Well, Rebecca, your quilts are absolutely gorgeous. And I'm taking in this particular picture that the lady in the background is Jen Kingwell. I could be wrong about that, but you can correct me in the show notes if you wish. This piece is absolutely stunning. And I see what you mean about the curves. I don't think I would have the guts to try that. Um, but maybe I'll look into those particular rulers you're talking about. I have heard of them before. And this is really the quilting in the background is just stunning. Your long armor did an excellent job. And I'm assuming both quilts were long armed possibly by the same person. And either way, they are both extremely stunning. So thank you, Rebecca, so much for sending those to us. Now, if you remember, last week I interviewed Lynn Reinhardt from Cotton Art Studio. She's also one of the co-hosts of the International Stitch Marathon, which uh, I will be talking about again a little later on. Um, but she, I thought I would check out her uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, and it's a very informative one. And she's got some really interesting tutorials and other things on there that I think you'll find of interest. So here's my review of Cotton Art Studio. This week's YouTube channel of the week is Cotton Art Studio. And this is a YouTube channel presented by Lynn Reinhardt, who you may remember I interviewed last week and have posted her interview up on my YouTube since. But let's just take a closer look at Cotton Art Studio and see what Lynn has to offer. Uh, on her front page, she has uh, some of her videos listed here, and it looks like she was doing something called a crayon color challenge uh, week. Uh, she has black and blue, indigo, week eight, orange. Uh, let's go to her videos. Now, Lynn is an online and in-person uh, teacher. She's been quilting, as you know from the interview, for, for many, many years. And she is trying to get herself reestablished in the uh, online world of quilting. She used to run a very successful vlog called Stitch TV and uh, she has let that go and now she is concentrating on her YouTube channel and on her website which uh, you will find the link to her website in the interview that I did with her last week. But here we have quite a few uh, videos about color and about and tutorials and i think she's also if we take a look at her playlists um she doesn't have a lot of videos up yet but i know that she is absolutely planning to have many many more and of course they will be all geared towards teaching uh maybe a lot of beginner quilters but i think she's going to extend out to more advanced as well but you know sometimes it doesn't hurt to watch a beginner quilting uh video or two because sometimes we can still learn from that we don't know everything at least i don't about quilting so these are very well done videos they're very clear um they're entertaining as well as informative so check out cotton arts studios by lynn reinhardt and that takes me to future projects what's on my vision board well i have a pattern i bought it uh for the sew together bag by so demented um it's a great bag it has lots of pockets in it and this is one i really want to get to just not sure when. I have this thing about when I go to make bags, I get intimidated when I first look at them. But you know, most I have made lots of bags in the past and the most complicated of patterns have worked out the best. Um, you just take it slow. Um, so here's my, I'll show you this in a little bit more detail right now. So what's on my vision board this week? Well, it's another bag. It seems that lately I've been obsessed with at least bag patterns for future projects that I want to make. But this one really caught my eye. And I have seen it around before, and I think there are different names for it and different pattern designers for it. But the one that I got was one that was recommended by Adam Sows. That's where I happened to see this one. And I went to the site. It was a Etsy store where you could download a PDF uh, 
copy of the pattern. A paid, you had to pay for it, of course. Um, so I did a search for so demented uh, products and I have found this pattern. Now this one is actually a paper pattern, but as I said, I'm sure you can get a PDF version. I'm not sure if you can get it here or not. Um, but there are other spots where you can find it. Just do a search for the name of the pattern, the Sew Together Bag. But this one shows you what it looks like. The inside of it is really quite cool. You've got these three separate pockets right in here. And uh, they each have a zipper to them. And they're in an accordion assembly, which means that they're expandable. Um, they do give you a list of the materials that you need, and I do believe this might be fat quarter friendly. This is what the outside looks like. And one of the things that really attracted me to this bag was the zipper. You can't see it in this picture, but the handle is also the zipper that closes it. And the zipper runs all the way around here, which I thought was kind of neat. So. I'm kind of looking forward to making this bag. I think it would be ideal for carrying your scissors and tools and things to a sewing class, sewing retreat. But it's got many other, uh, I think, very versatile uses as well. So that's the Sew, Sew Together Bag by Sew Demented. And there's a link for this in the show notes below. So at this point, I would be giving you a little teaser for the interview of the week, but I don't have one because I'm out again. I am out of interviews. So if you have some suggestions for individuals that you think I should contact for an interview, let me know. But I want to remind you of my criterion for uh, an interviewee. One, they have to be somebody that we don't really know. Okay, and what I mean by that is I don't give me the names of people out there that, you know, have a, a million subscribers to the YouTube channel. They do, you know, they go to quilts and, or quilt guilds and they give talks or lectures at quilt shows or things like that. Because these are people we already know all about. My mission in doing interviews is to interview everyday quilters, creators, creative people who really, they just do these things because out of the love of it. And, you know, they have something that I feel should be shared with everybody else. So if you can, if you can think of somebody that you think would be, fit that criteria, then please send along their name and contact information to me in an email. And I'll, investigate them a little further and maybe make a request to interview them. So, and you know, that doesn't mean you who are watching this today are not potential for interviews either. You, everybody that subscribes here to me and watches me on a regular basis, you're creative, you make things, I'd like to interview you. I have said that many times before and some of you have answered the call. But I know there's a whole lot more of you out there that are just too shy or you think you're shy. Don't be shy. I don't bite unless you want me to. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I would really enjoy interviewing you. Okay. Let's turn over the page, shall we, and see what's next. Okay. That brings me to the online quilt store of the week. This is called Closed Line Quilts and Handiwork. Com, and here's my review of that store. This week's online quilt store is called Clothesline Quilts in Handwork, and they are located in Newfoundland, Canada. And I don't think I have visited online any uh, quilting stores that are located in Newfoundland. So this will be something a little different. So this is their front page, and let's just take a look at what they have. Um, they have their mailing address. They're in Hawks Bay, uh, Newfoundland. Uh, we're not afraid to talk to you. Need help or just don't like piece, placing orders over the net? Contact, contact us. Thanks for shopping with us. So that's a very friendly uh, approach. Um, and 
about the person who runs this. Hi, my name is Pearl. I'm a nurse by profession and a crafter by passion. I've worked as a nurse for 30 plus years and I've had a wonderful career, still working in an industrial setting, hoping to continue for another few years few years. I started knitting at a young age, probably around seven to eight years, and my passion took off from there. I was soon doing embroidery, crocheting, and sewing. Okay, I think she's a really nice person, but I think she needs to do a little bit of uh, proofreading in terms of grammar and spelling. Um, yeah, <laughs> and it goes on. I'm one of those people who cannot pass a bolt of fabric or a ball of wool without stopping for a, a pick. I will feel the fabric and sniff the wool, always buying supplies I don't really need but want to add to my stash. Generally, if I like the color or print, I will buy it with plans to create something later. Um, and then she talks about the history of her store, which is all very interesting. So let's take a look at what she has to offer up here in her. Uh, uh, category. She has clearance bin, fabrics, daily deal, new arrivals, all quilting fabric, quilts as you go, quilt backs, basics and blenders, free motion ruler, quilting thread, notions, batting and such, knitting, embroidery, rug hooking, books and patterns. So she's into knitting and she's into embroidery and into quilting. So let's get right into her fabrics and see what she has to list here. Um, oh, Okay, subcategories. All right. Um, the general layout and design of the website is a little different from what you see a lot. Um, not saying it's bad. I'm just finding it a little different. So let's go. Let's jump into Christmas. No, no. Let's go into something that's pretty standard first. I was going to say Christmas fabrics because I'm starting to think about that right now. Um, Okay, let's go to collections. And what does she have? Oh, she's got the Northcott O Canada line. So let's take a look at that. Okay. Now her prices vary. Looks like eleven ninety eight to fifteen ninety eight. She does tell you when it's in stock, which is good. So I'm assuming if it's not in stock, it will say out of stock or maybe not even appear here. Um, this is one of the older O Canada collections. Well, I think that one's part of one of the new one. Okay, part of her titles are sort of cut off here. And this is what I meant by uh, web design. Uh, might be something they've done in-house. Not always a good idea, I don't think, when you're trying to sell something. Because basically, first impressions on your web page do make a difference. So let's check out this and see. Okay, she says the retail price was $17.48. Her price is $15.98. You save $1.50. Excuse me. We've seen that kind of thing before. Um, I think it's just a, a selling ploy. I have a feeling her regular price is always $15.98. So yes, she sells it by the meter and that is by the meter price. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm getting a little choked up here. I'll be right back. Okay, so that's Northcott. Let's see if, if her prices vary uh, beyond the $15.98. Um, well, let's check out Christmas. Sixteen fifty, fifteen ninety eight. So yeah, ten ninety eight watts a panel. It does look like her prices are in general about fifteen ninety eight a meter, which is actually pretty good. That's pretty good. We'll see about shipping in a moment. Um, then she has all quilting fabric. She's got a little blurb here. And okay, it really annoys me that part of her headings are cut off. So it looks like solids are 1050 a meter. Well, or 12.98. So prices do vary depending on the brand. Okay. Um what else can we check out? Let's check our clearance bin just to see what kind of sale she's having. Beginner rug hooking, pom-pom maker, 
some wool. Well, a few things. Maybe there might be something here for some people. Machine bulbs. She's got pages and pages uh, of things. So it might be worth if you like to do a little browsing for clearance items. That might be kind of fun. She has a daily deal. Daily deals will, will offer a selected item each day at a discount of 25 to 75%. Oh, she has the Twister pinwheel uh, ruler. Not sure which size that is, because they do come in different sizes. And it looks like we're not being told what size that is. Oh, there it is down here. It's the larger one. Okay, that's a good price. $12. That's a really good price. Uh, let's go back. She has some scissors, some other rulers, some jelly rolls, squares. Okay, so not bad. There might be some stuff in there. She says they're daily deals, so... I wonder how often she changes this. Daily deal would suggest to me it changes every day, but I have a feeling that's not the case here. New arrivals. Well, lots and lots of things. Uh, she has Metler Thread, $15. Uh, it's been reordered, so it's out of stock right now. So that's good to know. Some patterns. Okay, but there are many, many pages of this. I'm not going to spend the time going through that. That's something you could explore. Uh, quilt backs. So I'm assuming wide back. Nope. Uh, flannel cotton, 90 inch wide flannel. Go to cotton. Okay, 2096. Well, that's. 108 inches wide. That's a good price. That is a really good price. And she doesn't have a bad selection. They're pretty basic, but nevertheless. Um, basics and blenders. Free motion ruler quilting. Again, the prices do not seem unreasonable for the rulers. And it looks like she carries the Creative Grids, but the Angel Walters design. And she has Westerly uh, ruler feet. So, yeah, that's good. Thread. Now, it looks like she handles Mettler. She does. Um, and bottom line. So, Mettler threads. Again, cut off here. I think it's, I think these one might be 3,000 yards. It looks like 1,600 yards. $15, they're out of stock. Feather thread does not seem to be that easy to get. And she does not have that big a selection either. Total of four items. Okay. Um, notions. Ruler templates, cutters, and mats, quilters, helpers, zippers, pins and needles, irons, marking stencils, quilt labels, totes, button embellishment, hardware, sprays, adhesives. Let's take a look. Oh, I guess we can go just down. Fabric spray, best press, heat and bond, light fusible, out of stock, out of stock. She has some quilting feet. Walking feet, creative grid rulers, yeah. And again, prices here look reasonable. So yeah, her prices are not bad at all. Um, batting and such, bag batting and such. Okay, I don't know what and such means. Maybe it just means a variety of things here. Yeah, heat and bond light, insulbright, bright, Pellon fusible. Uh, she has some of the mesh fabric for bags, fusible fleece. Does not look like, well, let's see if we go to do all. Does not look like she sells 
batting really by the meter. There's lots of fusibles interfacing. Yeah, um, really find this all over the place in its organization, which is really what I'm finding. I am finding this website design to be a little annoying to navigate, but okay, she's still got good prices. All right, so not really much in the batting to choose from. Um, what else do we have? Well, we have embroidery. Embroidery thread, supplies, iron transfer kits. Let's take a look at embroidery thread. Okay, this is hand embroidery that we're talking about in here. Okay, not machine embroidery. She has rug hooking. That's something that you don't hear people doing much anymore. Uh, books and patterns. Quilting and sewing, knitting, crocheting, rug hooking. Let's look under quilting and sewing. Okay. These are pillows. Again, part of her uh, description is cut off. Necessary clutch. Well, she has pages and pages, so might be worth uh, taking the time to look through all those. I'm not going to take the time. Now, what I'm interested in, though, is what about her shipping? So I don't see anything talking about her shipping up here. Let's go. Oh, here we go. Bottom of the page. Your order will be processed and shipped in one to four days. All orders shipped by Canada Post, expediated, and USPS once they cross the border into the U.S. You will receive confirmation email tracking number once your order is shipped. Okay, I like it that she's going to provide a tracking number. Estimated delivery is within three to ten business days for most destinations in Canada. Um, estimated delivery is within to 15. 10 to 15 business days, your order may be delayed at customs and subject to the value of your order exceeding 2000 Okay, that must be for US. I find when she writes things in here, it's um, it needs some proofreading. It's not always very clear. And well, as I already mentioned, the grammar and everything seems to be all over the place, as well as the use of capital letters. Okay, maybe I'm being a little picky, but again, it's a first impression. And after all, I was an English teacher. Um, okay. If you are ordering a pattern or one to two meters of fabric, your order will be shipped via letter mail. The remaining portion of shipping will be refunded back to your card or PayPal account. Any item that weight 500 GM or less and can fit into an envelope cost between three to six dollars. Uh, email will be sent to you informing you of the amount refunded back to you. With this method of shipping, there's no tracking. Okay, this is a bit of a puzzle right here this is very kind of confusing uh if you're not or comfortable ordering online call me okay well you can call her by phone so okay here we go canadian orders up to 75 dollars 14 dollars up to 150 from there 16 dollars 150 up free okay that's good yeah and the u.s is comparable so i don't think her shipping prices are out of the way i think they're pretty good actually so Overall, clotheslines, quilts, and handiwork, and handwork, I think, uh, is worth checking out for the prices alone on both the shipping and on their fabric. This seems very, very reasonable. Um, the website's a little annoying for reasons I've already stated, but if you can get by that, I think you might be able to find yourself some good deals. Oh, she has freebies. Didn't see that before. Let's check out the freebies. Uh, these look like these are patterns. PDF downloadable patterns from various uh, manufacturers of patterns as well. So they're not really her freebies. They're just links up to freebies that are offered by other companies. Okay, well... You might want to check out clothesline, quilts, and handwork. And so that brings me close to the end of the episode. But I just want to, again, to remind you of the event that's coming up on July the 22nd. 
the International Stitch Marathon. There are about 10 or 12 hosts now, quite a few co-hosts. Uh, lots of people to check out. Their links to their YouTube channels are all in my show notes below, so you can go to them and explore what they're offering on their channels. But I do want to introduce you to different ones of the hosts uh, each week. And because there's so many of them now, I'm going to do the interviews, or not the interviews, the introductions um, on both the episodes of Idiot Quilter and on episodes of So Chatty. Uh, so I can get through everybody before July the 22nd. So this is one here today, uh, Jen Frost, who is a co-host, as I had said, and she's from Faith and Fabric. And uh, here's her little promo blurb about herself and her YouTube channel. Hi there. Welcome to Faith and Fabric. I'm Jen Frost. I'm so excited to welcome you to my small business. Here at Faith and Fabric, you're going to find beautiful quilt patterns, gorgeous fabrics, and beginner-friendly sewing projects. Let's take a closer look. Our quilt patterns are designed to coordinate with the Faith Year. We start in Advent with our beautiful Advent Wreaths quilt, which highlights each of the four weeks of Advent. When it comes to Christmas, there's a whole selection to choose from. My three favorites include the Pieced and Appliqued Silent Night, the Foundation Paper Pieced Mary and Jesus, which captures that beautiful moment between mother and son, and the Jesse Tree Quilt, which takes you on a journey from creation to Christ's birth through 25 themed blocks. I've also written devotionals for quilters. The first one is our Patchwork of Salvation, which takes you on a journey all the way from creation through Christ's birth and is meant to accompany the Jesse Tree Quilt pattern. Inside, you'll find beautiful quilt blocks, each designed around a specific day and a specific journey, all accompanied with um, space for devotion and space for reflection. The second book, um, Patchwork of Redemption, is coming out just in time for Lent. Speaking of Lent, one of my most popular patterns is the Lent quilt pattern, showing three crosses on the hillside. I've seen so many beautiful quilts made from this pattern with all kinds of colors in the background. Our second quilt for Lent is the Holy Week quilt, which like the Jesse Tree quilt is a themed quilt where you create one block for each of the eight days of Holy Week. For Easter, we have the Risen Quilt, which just speaks joy. Now, I love creating these patterns, but even more than that, I love creating them with you. And that's why almost all of our patterns have video tutorials out on YouTube to accompany you every step of the way. Now, I also really like to free motion quilt, and that's where I love my free motion Fridays. So almost every Friday, I have a new free motion video out designed to teach you a new pattern as well as tie into a reflection as each pattern is inspired from scripture. So thank you for spending a few moments with me. I look forward to getting to know you a little bit more in months to come. Take care. Okay, so that brings me to the end of this episode and I wanna thank you for joining me. And uh, I'm gonna say some things now that I don't usually say, but everybody else does, so I'm gonna do it too. If you liked this episode of Idiot Quilter, give it a thumbs up or a like. And if you are not a subscriber, consider subscribing. It's free. It costs you nothing. Okay. And it really does, as you hear other YouTube creators talk, it really does help uh, with the channel. Uh, there's something called an algorithm or something that you or YouTube uses and it makes your videos become more available or more visible, I guess, to the general public. So please feel free to subscribe to me. If you get bored with me, you can unsubscribe. Okay. Um, it just helps things out. So thank you. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.